Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Factorio Space Age goodness. Um, we're confused as heck on Gleba, and I love it so far. As weird as it is, I am really enjoying the, the chaos. I kind of have no idea what I'm doing. But we worked on a couple things since the last time. I got the processing doodads turned into bio chambers. Oh, there's a fly in here, so I might clap a few times trying to get it. Um, more like a gnat. It wants the Yumako mash, is what it's here for. So anyway, I turned these into bio chambers because otherwise the seeds are net neutral. So you only get a 2% chance at a seed, and each seed ends up producing 50 Yumako, right? And so that's exactly, on average, one seed back. But by having the extra 50% productivity, we're gonna get on average 1.5 seeds. So slowly we will build up a supply of seeds, which eventually we'll have too many of, but that's tomorrow's problem, not today's problem. Um, it's gonna be a long time before we have too many seeds. So the next priority is three of these trees is not enough, um, oh, that's where all the extra, okay, I was gonna say, I'm like, we should have some extra seeds by now. Uh, and here we are, we have 17. Um, but we only have three plots, and I need more than three plots here. So, yeah, 50 Yumako. Yields one seed. And 100 mesh. Okay, so then, anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is we need this wetland to be turned into artificial Yumako soil. So I want to start making this which requires landfill, nutrients, and Yumako seeds. We already have the nutrient loop going. It's just not running constantly due to what we already talked about. Um, and then what I think I want here is to output priority right, and all the extra mesh just gets burned. Um, basically everything that's extra gets burned. So all the extra mash gets burned, the jelly's getting burned. Now it's still possible... I don't think this will back up once I do it this way. Ah, oh, frick. I ran out of nutrients again. Okay, so spoilage goes in here. Um, I guess we should have... I actually want spoilage. I need to move my power, to be honest. This is not a very good spot for it. Um, can't use uncommon spoilage. Uh, um, do I have, I have a single Yumako mesh? Oh no, it all broke. It all broke again. And all I have is uncommon spoilage. Okay, let me just do this. Surely there's some spoilage in here, right? Yeah. Uh, so then we need to throw that in here. And then that should get some stuff running again. Oh, it uses so much spoilage is the problem. And all the wrong things are getting spoilage for our nutrients first. Oh, thank God. Okay. That'll jump start it again. Yeah, yeah. So you got less stressed out by Glaber when you realize everything that spoils is totally renewable. <clears throat> right. I mean, this is pretty chill. Because it's all about steady state. So rather than designing, it's just different because you have to keep the steady states running and all the extra stuff gets ditched like this because um, it's all going to turn to spoilage anyway. So it is a very different design. And this is not a final design by any means. I just want to get stuff running. I'm certainly going to make my final designs different. So now, what I really want is to make, yeah, these other types of soils. And so, 
We've got landfill here. And I need nutrients to flow past at some point. I don't even know how to do this. Um, for now, I'm just going to manually grab some seeds. I shouldn't have to worry about that too much. There's a very low chance we fail. Um, because this is an extra 50% productivity. So to fail on a seed, I'd have to roll 75 times. To, uh, so it's 0.98 to the power of 75. You've got a 22% chance to fail on each individual thing. But you have, therefore, a 78% chance to succeed, and some of those successes net you two seeds or even three seeds so as long as you're not leaving it down to like one tree you're probably fine we could even add prod modules that's true um, in fact we might want to to slow it down though weirdly slowing it down doesn't help that much because it's all gonna spoil anyway it's this is such a weird concept and I love it uh, but we are gonna need more heating towers to burn burn stuff up might need to put one over here to trash things on this side of the base so it's a little easier. Rather than trying to route all the items to here, we can just burn them in different places because then we're only having to route water around. Such interesting concepts. Um, like this one is going to put nutrients over here for these buildings. But the problem is that's going to should do it. Uh, yeah, I should just go like this. But then those nutrients are going to spoil. So we basically need to just dump that into a provider chest. And now we have to read that belt. And then maybe I enable disable this one. Only if I have more than 70 nutrients on the main belt will I allow that to flow. And then spoilage here. Well, we'll just turn all this over to the to the trash zone. Wait, that's not the trash zone. Sorry. This is the trash zone. The raw fruits spoil pretty slowly. Well, yeah, what is their spoil time? Oh, it, it is an hour. Abouts. Thereabouts. Okay, so now these need seeds. Um, which I have some of these. Needs two seeds for ten soil. Interesting. Okay. So there's some Yumako soil. What's up, car accident? Okay, and this is telling us that these are the areas. Oh, that's handy. Okay, I like that. And now we can plant some more Yumako trees. There we go. So three was almost enough to keep the loop going. I think four or five would have been enough, and now we have seven. So that should be plenty to keep the nutrient loop going. Um, now, nutrients can't be burned? I did not know that. Kind of ironic, actually. So... So this needs to have a filter to the right for nutrientos. And then that can be spoilage. Oh my, 
What what chaotic messes do we create in this game? Such a joy. They have a yum value rather than a fuel value. Exactly. They are tasty. Oh, they literally have a yummy value. You're not kidding. What game are we playing? <laughs> I can have legendary nutrients <sighs> with a yummy value of two mega jewels. Oh. <sighs> This is ridiculous, and I love it. I love every little bit of it. Um, we are gonna run out of nutrients so quick here. Please, please hurry up and grow. The problem is all three of these are like on the same cycle. I wonder, it would almost be handy if you could tell this to like take a chill pill. I'm sure you could set it up with a combinator a timer to like plant one tree and then wait 20 seconds and then plant another tree rather than plant 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 because then it's gonna go harvest 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 and since we're looking at steady state we don't want it to do that now I could slow down the inserters output override the stack size here go down to like four and then it will outsert slower which might slow down the collection depending on yeah it's only got two output slots <laughs> So we might be okay with that. Um, and then this should also be accumulating seeds. Yeah, so let's grab some jelly nut seeds. Those go in there. Those nutrients are almost dead anyway. And then that's going to amount in a lot of spoilage, which I'm okay just outputting into these. Um... And then we can have a filter inserter into an active for a spoilage. Trasher. So we can do that on those. Get rid of any spoilage that ends up happening inside the building. Oh, interesting. I didn't expect to be able to productivity this. It's weird, because it's like landfill. But... Here we are. Um, I don't really know if productivity in that is that worthwhile, but why not? And unfortunately, we're about to run out of yum yum. Yum yum nutrients. Oh, here they come. Are we gonna be too late? It's like just barely gonna make it, maybe? We've got some mash. Please, please, please. Yes, okay. Just enough to restart the cycle before this all turns to spoilage. If it's running constantly, will this spoil? Or will the new nutrients being added in pump up the remaining time? Remaining time is 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Oh, and then it just added more. It's so interesting. Wow, this is crazy. Hey, thanks for the follow, Danger. Okay, so this is all looping properly now, I think. So now it's a matter of seed collection, which I guess having the productivity modules does help with that quite a bit. Because it's already net neutral on seed production at productivity of zero. So having 74% productivity is actually about 50% more created seeds than plus 50% productivity. Hey, thanks for the sub danger bridge out. New spin-off series announced, Yumako Mash. Exactly. I just this is cool. I'm digging I'm digging Glaba so far. Um As far as the eggs, we seem to have screwed up. Wait, why did these not hatch into Oh, I see the problem. This needs to filter eggs only. Uh, and we need a separate whitelist. Uh, here, let me just paste one here. We need a spoilage getter. That's what happened. And then spoilage ended up on the belt where it shouldn't have been. Okay. All right, so our pentapod eggs are going to be cycling properly here. 
Why not do some productivity? Ooh, that uses more yummy, yummy nutrients. Interesting. I wonder which... Is this considering the fuel consumption in the crafting window? I don't think it is. So those are two megajoules, so that's 0.25 a second, but it's using four per second for the crafting. So if I do this, it slows it down to 2.4 a second. So I'm saving 1.6 nutrients a second, but I'm consuming now 0.75 a second for nutrients fueling it, which is still a lot less total. Basically, I just wanted to slow this down so it's not using so many nutrients, but it but it will keep functioning. This will produce eggs consistently, assuming I have nutrients, which I should be getting nutrients consistently, assuming this belt is pretty full. <sighs> it's so crazy. Now, can you burn Yumakos? I assume you can, right? Yeah. So let's get another heating tower. Okay. There's so many thoughts. Exchanger, turbines. And where is the heating tower? Down here. And then we'll start to think about iron and copper in this episode and actually producing those things. Because that's going to be, you know... A little necessary. I don't want to have to import everything, though I could. At this point, my Vulcanist base is rich enough that I could certainly just import everything if I wanted to. This is just such a weird, such a weird world we now live in. Oh my goodness. Okay, so anyway, uh, heat tower. Let's put one over here. that I, I'll probably organize this such that they are all centrally located at some point turbo belts are also nice um, going to Vulcanist before Gleba because they literally are faster but forget that the that they even do 60 items a second even if they only did 30 items a second it's just the fact that the items go from point A to point B in a smaller amount of time turbo belts are going to I don't know about drastically, but they're they're certainly going to increase your overall um So yeah, well output priority rate. They're just gonna increase your overall uh sp spoilage freshness. Or I should say decrease your spoilage overall. And increase freshness is maybe a better way to phrase it. So I don't really know the timing on this. That might be too many Yumakos. Like if the Yumakos back up all the way to here, we might end up, um, you know, the, the lag time to process that many might be too much. It might be not enough. I'm not sure. Um, Yeah, also, it's nice to go straight from red to, to green belts because it doubles again. SMO. <laughs> like Minto's. The Fresh Maker. Okay, so that'll run that. Oh, I guess we need some water, don't we? Okay, where's the nearest water? Over here? So that'll get rid of extra Yumako. Now the real question is, is this running fast enough? Four Yumako a second nets us about six nutrients a second, which seems to be enough. Even more than that because of productivity. Right, right, right. Forgot about productivity. And why don't I have two output inserters? That will just help things stay more consistently filled up here. 
And this is grabbing all the extra spoilage. Good, good, good. Now, if you trash unrequested, will it trash once we go past a thousand? I actually don't know how this new feature works. Um, Glaba starts to grow on you. Yeah, so that's the thing, Dave. I like Glaba as a figuring it out challenge. I am curious to see, though, because obviously, like, you can't just scale it. You can't just copy paste things and do tile level builds and it all just works on Glaba. And I do think that can be kind of negative because you can't just put stuff on trains, you know, and just have whatever. Like, all of the things that work everywhere else in Factorio don't work on Glaba. I think in one way that's cool, in another way it could be annoying to try to make a mega base out of it. It's almost like you need these self-contained builds that all go from start to finish in the same amount of time, and I don't even know how the... Because you can't just make any resource anywhere, you have to be in the right biome, I think. So that can be kind of annoying. <laughs> Yesterday, you had to just get up and walk away, Matt. Um, so what we're doing here is we're saying we only give these guys nutrients if we have enough. Okay. So let me grab some more seeds then. Because I should have plenty here. We'll keep making some Yamako soil. We've got some more jelly nut soil too, which we can throw over here. Some more jelly nut trees. Um, which I'm really just using for fuel. I still seem to be okay on fuel. I should probably put an alarm on this as a little just in case measure. Uh, yeah, I actually don't know if pentapods expand. Uh, we could do... Map view... Debug mode. Show expansion... Candidate chunks. It seems like they can expand, based on this. But I, I guess that still doesn't technically prove that they can expand. They, like... I don't, I don't know exactly what that means, so that still could mean they don't expand. They just have expansion candidates, but don't actually use them. I don't know. Um, plenty of landfill. So here's more Yumako soil. Nice. Okay, so that's a lot. That's a lot of you. Wait, why are those not back? Why are these not highlighted in green? Because they're highlighted in yellow here in the, the little agriculture tower. So why can't... Like, why is there not, like, a green box there? Oh, is that because this tile isn't... Oh, it's Olive Blubber 2. It's not Yumako Wetland. I see. But shouldn't this not be a yellow tile, then? Shouldn't that be a red tile, like this one is? Hmm. That feels weird. Oh, I need something called overgrowth Yumako soil. There's two tiers of soil. So once we go a little further and we get biter eggs. Oh man, I need biter eggs like from Nalvis? Placeable anywhere in the green biome. I see. 
Okay. They should have different colors for that. There should be a, a yellow color that works. And then... Maybe just a dark blue or something, or I, I don't know. Because not all yellows are created equal, basically. Is what this is saying. Anyway, that should be enough trees for now. Keep things running. And this is even sending some extra stuff to our heating tower. Okay, I never made the, the alarm. So you, what's the heat actually output as? Uh, did not show me. I connect it to this. Oh, read temperature, there we go. Uh, T. Less than, I don't know, if we fall under 750, probably make a global alert. Complain in some form or fashion. And then this is making three eggs from every one egg, accounting for productivity. Or no, is that not how that When, no, 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 no. When the productivity triggers, it only makes one more egg, I think. Yeah. So it's actually making 1.5 eggs. Or 2.5 eggs for every one egg, basically. Um, Oh, yeah, there's a lot of comments. Uh, let's see. Is there a way to make the soil fertile? Yeah, I mean, Matt answered that. Um, Marty, you just learned that it, the science spoils? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think we've got a loop here. It's very satisfying. I will say Gleba is satisfying once things are running. I think we've handled all the basics here. So the only thing now... is basically to get more of the seeds to make more of the types of soil. Um... How many jelly nut seeds do we have? We still don't have a ton of jelly nut seeds. This is not exactly the best jelly nut area. It's up here. This is going to be better. So we should probably do another jelly nut farm. You know what would be real clutch is if it told you how many of those tiles were green without, without you having to manually count them. Be pretty clutch. Uh, like, is that more or less than this? I feel like this is about as good as we're gonna do. Now, are bots faster than belts? Should I be resigning? The, the seed delivery, whoa. Should I be doing seed deliveries via bot? Yeah, a one hour timer on science is is not pretty high. We did, we did notice that it's one hour. Now, that could be a good argument for actually making only uncommon and higher, is just to give your, your spoilage timer a bit more. Like, normally productivity is better than quality when it comes to science, but in this particular case... I'm enjoying breaking these boom puffs. Um, in this particular case, it might actually be better to do quality science. Interesting. 
Okay, so do I want to do a belt for this, or do I want to do something else? I think a belt is fine. Um, it's a lot of belts, but whatever. It's not that crazy. I've seen crazier. We will need the Derpamu to go get more belts at some point, though, so why don't we just drop a bunch of stuff. Uh, I am going to want calcite for making iron and copper and stuff. And did I deliver foundries, I think? Make sure we got a bunch of stuff here. That should be good. And now we'll go back to Vulcanus to pick up all that all that stuff again. All right. So, so that's the seeds, and then we need fruits, jelly fruits. Fruits of our jellies. Like this. Perfect. Okay, and then we'll need to jump start it with some some seeds here. And I'm out of landfill, I think. Because I don't even think I have that requested. You do seeds via bots. Throughput is low and distance is long. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking as well. So I might, I might switch that over. And then it's easier to keep track on how many we have. That's a really long belt to buffer the seeds on. And I already have bots, so let's just get that going. At first I was worried about the power consumption and stuff, but we're, we're okay on power now. Once we got the jelly nut burning happening. This is not as big of an area as it feels like. Now, why is this not getting built? Any ideas? Any ideas? Why don't I have landfill? Ah, because that's not a provider chest. There we go. And I don't think I actually put construction bots in the network. Also a problem. Yeah, yeah, I did see that wood was on the belt. Um, was it this one? Where did it go? Oh, it hasn't been connected yet. That's why. Yeah, right here. Oh, uh, that belt's going the wrong direction. So that's fun. There we go. Okay, so there's plenty of jelly nut. And I am just gonna ditch this belt now that we built it. Wait, you can right click with decon planners? Now that's odd. What does that do differently? Huh. You can do both. That is strange. Can't shift click. Jelly nut seeds ten. That sounds perfect.
Alright. Jelly Nut is going. Um, we do need... some form of... Let's see. I'll put priority right. I'll put priority left. These go to get burned. Probably should be distributing this heat over more than just one, <laughs> one doodad. Um, I guess we need four heat exchangers for just one heating tower to potentially use all the power. So, all right. Now, how do we deal with iron and copper? Is the real question. Ooh, there is a behemoth spitter that explains probably the damage here. And let's slowly work on the next laser damage, just because that will continue to make our novice defenses even more effective. Though at this point, it's going to attract a lot of biters to do all that research, when I probably am just starting to see the pollution cloud shrink. Yeah, so biters aren't really attacking anymore. But by doing this research, we're going to make a pollution cloud again. Oh, well. Okay, this still... This seems to be running steadily. I'm happy with that. This needs to be a... Lighter chest. seeds. Why are there only that many planted? Oh, okay, there we go. Now, the danger is if this... Uh, can you disable this harvesting? Entity on. Okay, good. Um, basically, we only want to harvest. I wish you could enable or disable harvesting versus planting. Like, I want planting to be on always, and then I want it to only harvest sometimes. Um, basically, when this belt is full, which is going to be four per tile, and we've got. 93 tiles, 93 times 4, basically 3, just call it 300. So this is a way to do it. That might actually make it so we don't even need this other belt. I didn't, I hadn't thought about this possibility. Okay, so it's going to plant all the seeds. Now it should do a harvest or two. You know what I need to do is read the contents. But the problem is it doesn't read its own contents. Like, if I read the contents, it's not going to add its own Yumako to the number that it sees on the belt. So I'd actually need to use a combinator for that, weirdly enough. Because in this case, I do want it to see its own contents for this number. Because I kind of want the number that it has plus the belt to be less than a certain amount. 
but th it should be okay. It's only going to harvest up to 100 extras at a time. So this will still be pretty close. It'll wait until we have less than 300 on the belt. Then it will do a harvest. Okay. Although it plants first and then harvests, but this is fine. So that way we're not wasting tons and tons of Yumiko. I had thought initially that's not going to be a problem, but wasting the Yumiko little plants means you're actually potentially going to lose out on seeds. So this is potentially necessary in some form or fashion. It's so weird that using a belt is actually optimal because it keeps the freshest things in the front. It's so weird. Also, this feels very bad for performance. Like the game tracking individual spoilage on this many items. I just struggle to see the game running as well as we're used to it running. Um, oh. We actually can't keep up with all the, the jelly nut burning. Okay, so... Basically, I need to read this belt. Belt, these belts, and these belts. And then enabled if jelly nut. Um, I mean, we can, Matt. We would just need more bioprocessing. So for now, we're just limiting it in such a way that we then don't have to worry about whether we can process all of it fast enough or not. Um, what am I doing? I want jelly nut itself. Let's say 400. Uh, no, I guess it actually needs to be like 400. And then we need the same thing over here. Oh, but this is not going to have the same signal. So we need to connect this along the power lines. You know, now that I think about it, I could have used a radar, but kind of forgot that was a thing until just now. So then I'll paste, copy that setting, paste the setting over here. There we go. So that should keep the jelly nuts from going nuts. luck, we're going to be okay. So interesting. So interesting. All right, so iron. How do we deal with iron? I just want to make sure this is working properly. It all still seems to be working properly. We still got biter eggs go or pentapod eggs going. Now, bacteria. How do you bacterias work? Um, so that's here. Copper bacteria. Uh, comes from Yamako Mash. And then you can cultivate that with bioflux. Uh, is that better? Uh, bioflux. How do we make bioflux? Bioflux is just mash and jelly. 
quality puns. There are so many puns. I go around here. I don't even know what I said. Did I say a pun on accident? Because I don't think I meant to. <laughs> um, I usually make it overly clear when I make bad puns. So wait, where's the actual recipe for the ore? Is it this one? Oh, I can also make nutrients from bioflux instead of from, oh my God. So I really should be doing something else with the jelly here. It should be. Left. And we'll prioritize right. Okay, so this is prioritized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom puff, boom puff. Okay, so here's bioflux making. Um, oh, I need more of these bio chambers. You need nutrients. You need spoilage. Spoilage. Um, okay, so this has... Oh, good, it does work. Okay, cool. So it actually trashes extra... Spoilage that goes past a thousand. That's cool. Okay, that's what we wanted. So spoilage. How do I have sixteen hundred spoilage in here? That's worrisome. Uh, I guess it's just spo extra spoilage that ends up here. Yeah. Yeah, I need a system. Hmm. I basically need two options here, rather than one. I need one that just basically sends it to go get burned if we already have enough spoilage in the network. But these are all going to turn to spoilage here in a minute. Uh, but first, let me put spoilage in a requester chest. We don't have to worry about this, thankfully. Because it's just going to stay spoilage. So that's fine. We'll make a bunch of those guys and bio chambers. Bio chambers are weird. Um, for now, I'm just gonna manually bring over pentapod eggs because otherwise we're gonna get into trouble here. At some point we could have a way to automate that. Maybe automate them over here by the actual Intipod eggs. For now, I'll just manually feed it. That should be fine. I only have enough to make like seven, six more. Like that. the seeds looking over here. Oh good. We got all sorts of cultivation happening. Was it the jelly? I don't know. We're about to look at the iron and copper recipes here in a minute. Um, but basically I want to do the, the bacterial. It's this one. Yeah, you get four spoilage from the iron bacteria. Um, so, I want to do this, bio things. I really wish splitters could have a, a way to split off things of a, 
a certain spoiled spoiled level. Um, that could be really handy. that one anymore, but in case we do, we'll wrap it around and merge it, and then we'll just go past this, and I'll add a second one. Just to make sure we can really burn up the whole pile of resources we want to get rid of. I know that this is way more heat than the boilers we have will support, but that's fine. This is called lava. This is this is lava, is what this is. <laughs> um, hey, look, we made spoilage. Bioflux only. Oh wait, never mind. Where's my Yumako mesh? Are we not making it fast enough? Yeah, I guess we're consuming most of it to make nutrients. Okay, there's Bioflux. And we should use the Bioflux to make nutrients rather than... Yumako Mash. Because that's only one and a half per, and that's eight nutrients per bioflux. So we'll run the bioflux down here and over. Also, can we just talk about how nice green belts are? It feels like modded. It feels like modded belts. Look at that distance. Mmm, delicious. Um. So we'll have a little buffer here of bioflux to make nutrients. Output priority left. Uh, and then go back. <laughs> the spaghetti's real. Oh, isn't the spaghetti real? Yeah, Matt, having just even something simple, like you said, like less than 50%, just to be able to like filter off the stuff that's closer to spoiling in some fashion. Because right now, all you can do to handle that is put it all in a chest and then do spoiled priority. But even that's not, that's still not a form of filtering. It's a form of prioritizing, which is different. Right, because it'll still like what you might want is an inserter that only takes out things if they are 20% or more or 20% or less close to spoiling and there's no way to do that it, even if you do freshest first or spoiled first it's still potentially going to take things that are more or less spoiled than 20% so that, that it's interesting that there's no easy way to just do that um Okay, so this should work. We definitely are a little low on the Yumako mash. Four point seventeen a second, eight point three five a second. Why is that so much faster? Belly nut gives four. Marco gives two. Well, that's why. That explains it. Um, I could use a beacon here. This is a place where speed is fine. Whoa, 14.6 a second? I don't need that much. 
Uh, what do we got? More tips? Agricultural science pack gives less value the more it's spoiled. Well, that's not... Okay, we knew that. Alright, so... Bioflux is now happening. Yes? I guess we need to do something like this. keep the bioflux flowing. And then that makes two bioflux a second. This can use way more than two a second, so we should put prod in here, because this is just fast AF. Uh, we also need a spoilage, get rid of her. <laughs> yeah, who needs a second bio lab? Yeah, do you mean bio chamber? Um, okay, so now we've got Bioflux. That's another thing checked off the list. I still have no idea how we actually make iron ore from this. What's the actual recipe? Oh, you spoil- Oh, you just let it spoil- Oh, I didn't actually look at what this spoils into. Iron bacteria just spoils into iron. That was probably in the FFF and I just forgot. Okay. All right, gotta stay hydrated on Gleba. Okay, so then we need a loop of iron bacteria and bioflux to make more iron bacteria. So let's set that up. Oh my goodness. Wait, how did I only get four more out of that? Oh, there's the other one. Apparently I have two output <laughs> chests. Um, Okay, so let's imagine, so our bioflux, uh, let's see. No, this one. So bacteria in plus bioflux equals bacteria out, okay. So this is, this is one, oh, I'll probably have to move all this solar. This is one where I do think I want some beaconage and some prod. <laughs> spoiler warning. There's lots of spoiler warnings happening here. All right, so we can pretty simply loop around the bacteria Meet with Bioflux. Come around the back. Bioflux itself. Okay, hold on. We'll, we'll think about this in a second. So, bacteria spoils real fast. So we don't want to buffer too much of it. Most of it, we want to go a different direction to spoil happily to turn into copper. Um... So then we want this to go, maybe maybe we'll filter even right here. So I'll put priorities left to get enough to keep feeding these. But the rest moves on to go get spoilt on purpose um, with the iron. And then the bioflux 
which sounds like a fake thing, but it's not. Come over here. And... Split. Output priority left. I do something like this. this. Um, maybe... Make some room here. And put this... Items on belts move fast, we should be okay. I think. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, okay, so Bioflux comes down. Oh, we copied all that. Okay, so... Then we ah! Oh! I bet you guys were waiting for that. I don't know where, I guess I had him in my inventory. Oh, wow, my heart. Ooh. Wow, that gets ya. <laughs> I didn't even, I did, man, didn't plan on that, but that was, that was good. That was good timing. <laughs> this is the Gleba experience. Oh my gosh. Wow, I don't have any more, do I? Egg, no, okay. Because I remember now, I took some out because I didn't want them to spoil in here, and then I didn't do anything with the ones that were in my inventory. I now remember doing that. Oh, man. <laughs> Whew. All right, heart rate needs to come down a little bit after that. <laughs> so, uh, these will be the iron ones. Yes, I'm aware I need to jump start it. Uh, we'll deal with that in a minute. I, I want to get it set up before we need to jump start it. Um, the bioflux will do this and just back up. That's fine. I think with bioflux's long spoil time, we'll be okay. Um, to just let that back up to here. And then maybe we measure this belt and like once it backs up to here, we just stop making... Uh oh. How did that happen? How did spoilage get in the Yumako mesh spot? I am slightly concerned about that. How did that happen? Mm. Is that because this backed up? It might have been because Bioflux backed up in the first place. No, how did spoilage get on this belt? Oh, because this needs to filter to... It's probably nutrients got spoiled in the biochamber, uh, is what happened. So this needs to filter for bioflux only. And then we need a... Get rid of spoilage doodad. And we need that on here. As well. And you need to blacklist spoilage so that's probably what happened is spoilage got into this chest and then we need to do the same for this blacklist spoilage on that um, this one we're already getting rid of spoilage this one also, okay. all right, all right, all right, doing okay, doing okay, we're learning, learning is occurring, all right, so finally, we need to kickstart this process, oh, and we need to feed it nutrients, ah, nutrients, um, 
I'm gonna assume... That this will work. And not spoil, because they'll run fast enough. Uh, if we just grab... Bio flux and make nutrients from that. It's so crazy though, because then you need to feed nutrients to yourself. It's just wa wacky. Wacky, wavy, inflatable arms too, man. Okay, uh, so what if we just do something like this? Hopefully that cycles fast enough to keep things running. Okay, so I need a few nutrients to kickstart that. But then it just stops. But if those are running constantly, this should run fast enough to keep... Uh, we'll see. We'll see. The, certainly the less logistics I put into it, the more it breaks completely when it breaks. Um, so, this is going to break pretty hard when it breaks. So then I need to feed it the initial bacteria, which we can just make, I don't know, manually. Go grab some jelly. Some jelly. Here. What's the spoil time on jelly, by the way? Just a few minutes. Okay. Wow, is that? Yeah, that is only 10%. Okay. So. I'm gonna need all the jelly, please. She's alive! Okay. So there's iron bacteria. And now... This needs to keep flowing. Um... I don't even know what I'm doing. Um... For now, just put it in a chest. All right. And why are we not seeing more bioflux? Just slow. Um, I'm worried about the nutrients right here spoiling before their time. Nutrients spoil pretty fast. So I may just need a small nutrient loop for all this. I don't know. Um, okay, and then initial copper. Need some. Oh, and it all spoiled. There we go. Initial copper bacteria. Bada bing, bada boom. The times feel very punishing for an official DLC. Yeah, Dave, I, I'm interested to see how the how the timing feels, but an hour feels pretty short for the science packs. Especially because even if you get it there in half the time, well, now you've lost half of your science value. So it's like even a half hour turnaround, which feels pretty quick still, says you've lost half of your actual science pack throughput. Yeah, it, it feels a bit short to me as well. I don't know about a lot of the other spoil time. See, like, this already turned to iron, so that's problematic. So are these not eating... Oh, they're not getting bioflux fast enough. Uh, this is a rate problem, so let's speed this up. 
Six a second. These each need one a second. Okay, so that's hopefully enough now. Um, let's feed these a bunch of extra for a minute. Yeah, I get that, Lodro, but like, it still, it takes quite a lot of setup to get the, the turnaround to be small. Oh, what? How did those spoil on the very end? Didn't we fix the stuff getting spoiled on the end of this belt problem? Hmm. backs up, will we be okay? I think so. Not totally certain about that, though. Okay, how much does this eat? This eats three per second, but it's not running most of the time. our spoilage amount look like? Three and a half thousand? I don't know. I don't know if this is going to break or not. So we still do need more of this, weirdly. Let's do prod here. Um, I'm okay on power. Yeah. Let's uh, work this out a little better. Oh, but then the nutrient loop is weird. Ugh, there's so many little weirdnesses here. Um, uh, let's start with that, and then the nutrient loop. We'll just... these out of the way. Beacons on this side. That's not a beacon. This is where I feel the stress because like, oh, I have to build fast because stuff is breaking as I go. So it, I don't love that. It almost feels like you need to design everything away from your base as like a blueprint and then come back later to actually build it. It almost feels like you need the editor mode now in vanilla to do this kind of thing. I don't know if I love that. Feels like it punishes just slowly derping around and messing with stuff. Um, okay, so there's two of them and we can get more. And then as far as spoilage goes, we do want to filter these to bioflux only again. We'll deal with spoilage in a minute. Or maybe we just filter out spoilage right here or something. Yeah, maybe I do it that way, and then I don't have to worry about these being filtered. And are they fast enough? They might not be, actually. Might need two each. Here's 
here's the question. Is that one putting it before or after the splitter? I think... Okay, the answer's after the splitter. Because otherwise it wouldn't work at all. Alright, um, so that one's okay, is what that means. And then we can... Put an active provider chest here. Yeah, it's fine that no, I don't mind the wasting so much, Dave, as it is the pain in the, the butt that it is to restart the systems when they break. Now, obviously, there's some amount of skill in building the systems such that they don't break, right? Like, that's part of the fun and part of the challenge. So I do, I do kind of like that, but it's also a little tricky. Because right now, like, I am utilizing the fact that things are running continually. Because um, if they weren't, then eventually this bioflux is going to spoil, right? So we kind of, like, we need to make sure it does keep running at some amount of consistent rate. Otherwise, things will break. So there is there is kind of a, a difficult balance of, like, yeah, eventually this will break. But if it keeps running, are we going to be okay? Like, my iron got all... And my iron and copper are now all dead. Alright, so then... Oh, you're right, Matt. Biochambers don't use power. They use yummy. So I'm using more yummy for these. Right. Am I using too much yummy? so weird, so efficiency modules are going to have a different impact on Glaiba too than they normally do. Okay, I actually want this to go faster again now. Mm. Doesn't need to grab seeds eventually, right? <laughs> Uh, okay, so then we need to jumpstart this again. Um, as far as me just picking up a bunch of this stuff. Okay. And then grab one of you. And then switch over to the initial iron bacteria. You. Wait, did that not work? Oh, the nutrients. The nutrients spoil so fast, you really gotta keep an eye on that. Okay. So there's that loop running, this loop. And the question is, are these eating nutrients fast enough for this, for the nutrients to not spoil by the time they get to the end? And that's the thing I don't yet know the answer to. But now that it's running steady state, we might be okay. Now, does the bacteria, I know the bacteria spoils to ore, but does the bacteria have a fuel? No, it doesn't. Now here's the problem. What if we want to get rid of the bacteria? What if we want to get rid of iron and copper ore? Recyclers! I forgot, I have recyclers. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so now we need some form of recycling if we have too much. Um, the other question I'm asking my, myself right now is do I want to make it... so that they stay on a belt long enough to spoil? but I don't think so. I think I'll just make it so that we have filtered inserters to grab iron and copper. 
out. Spoilage shouldn't be in here. That's not a thing. Uh, shouldn't be a thing going forward. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop. Don't do that. Um, okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Which one? That one. Make it so that they're balanced. And then we can have iron go right. Okay, so there's some weird form of iron and copper automation. Um, seems to be working. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I think we need to call that the end of the recorded YouTube episode. We're going to keep streaming, though, so those that are here live don't go anywhere. Um, but for those of you on YouTube, let me know what you guys think about Gleba. This has been really interesting. I'm really enjoying the the process. Honestly, this is really cool. There there have a few been a few things I don't love, but on the one hand, I don't get the hate. On the other hand, I do get the hate because I think this would be a really bad planet to come to first. So I'm, I'm loving it, but I also understand. And I do think I, I made a comment, something like this in the last episode. I do think making it such that somehow the game implies to you that Gleba is a worse first choice, at least for newer players who don't know what they're getting into. Like, Volgora and Vulcanus could be tier 1 planets, and Gleba's a tier 1.5, and Aquilo's the tier 2 planet. You know, like, I don't know but how they could, could do that, but this is way more complicated. I mean, imagine being a new player that's never done any mod packs, and you haven't done Vulcanus or Fulgora, and you come here. Like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine it. There are going to be so many frustrating things. Like, I was able to get all this smacked together pretty easily because of all my experience with mod packs and just all my experience with Factorio, but a lot of this stuff is a lot harder than I think I've made it look. Not even that I'm, like, that great at this game or anything, but I think this is actually pretty complicated stuff. And it's it's definitely stuff that I like, and it's kind of in, in, in the wheelhouse. See, this is another problem. Um, is the... If this backs up, this one is the one that keep. Uh, actually, I don't know exactly. I don't know. Anyway, all that to say, um, I think finding a way to to somehow show new players that Gleba is actually really tricky could be good for the game. Um, but I think if players know what they're getting into, Gleba's not maybe that bad so far. I've enjoyed it at least. Um, now, the real question is, can you recycle before the episode ends? I know I said we were going to be done, but I want you guys to find out with me. Can you... Oh, I don't have any recyclers. Never mind. Wait, I have zero recyclers? Really? Oh. Okay, never mind. I was going to find out if we could recycle the bacteria or just the ore once we have it, but we're going to have to uh, save that question for another day because there are no recyclers on here. So we're going to send this guy over to Fulgora, actually, to go pick up some recyclers. Um, I'm going to remove a couple things here. We're just going to request the buildings. Like that. Okay. Alright, well... Anyway, as always, for those of you from future YouTube recordings, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next episode.